Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the kick off your Ruby APM automation with Ruby Raider uh, by Augustine. Uh, we are glad Augustine can join us today. Thank you so much for the introduction and hello everyone. A pleasure to have you here. We are going to be doing um, a lot of back and forth between the presentation and the ADE. So let's touch upon the topics on the agenda. So what we're going to be looking at is a quick introduction. That's the spot we were before. I would like to also talk a little bit about why did I chose Ruby as an automation language. I know Ruby might not be the first language for a lot of people getting into automation in general. So I really want to spend a couple of minutes there. Then I'm going to show you how you can create a framework with Ruby Raider out of the box to work with Appium. And we're going to run our first test. I'm going to run it both locally and in browser stack so you guys can see the difference. Afterwards, we're going to move into a deep dive of the framework structure. Why did I took some decisions on the generation of certain components, certain helpers, what problems I was trying to solve, right? And maybe that can translate to any of your real life uh, cases. Afterwards, I really want to touch upon cross-platform frameworks because the reason why I created Raider was mainly to tackle these cross-platform frameworks solutions that I was working on. And then a little bit on the infrastructure and how it works, how we can use it with browser stack. And at the end, it's going to be new features that are going to be coming in. And of course, if you guys have any questions or any interesting ideas or features, you can also write in the chat or you can write afterwards to me. I'm going to be around. But let's jump right to it. So after the introduction, why did I choose Ruby as my automation language? This is really interesting because I actually didn't start as a Ruby developer. I started as a PHP developer, but I was trying to mainly look for something that, what can I say, will bring me joy while automating and doing both my Selenium and my Appium test cases. I try with JavaScript. I try with Python. I also try, of course, with Java. But I end up falling into this niche of Ruby automation through Water, right? A really great framework for web automation. And it was just really simple and really elegant to write. Here, I put an example of finding an element with Ruby and Appium. The Ruby Appium library is really well maintained and it's pretty great, I would say. So you can just do driver that find element. And I know this might be a common example because all the different bindings look a little bit similar. We are gonna go more into deep in the generated code, right? But I think that the main points why Ruby is a great choice if you haven't considered it for your automation language solution is simplicity. It's really easy to start writing Ruby to get the whole of the syntax, you know, to get an idea of how the language works. So the learning curve is not steep at all. And then the development speed, right? In the creator of Ruby say that he created Ruby with the mindset of incrementing developer happiness, right? And I can totally feel and see that. And hopefully we can see that through some of the examples that we're gonna go through. So after that quick introduction and explanation why I choose Ruby, let's just actually generate a project with Ruby Raider. Now is going to be one of the times I'm going to jump to my terminal. So I'm just going to share right now and hopefully you guys are going to see it in one second. Let's see. This is my Appium server running in the background. So I'm just going to split here vertically. And then I'm just going to, let's see, there we go. I'm just going to do Raider new. And let's call this Appium X. I like to call the X when I do cross platforms. It's just for me to like remember. So now if you can see, we have the different options that Raider offer us. And we are mainly interested on Appium. 
So we're going to select our Appium framework. We're going to select cross-platform. We can do only for iOS or only for Android. And then we can select RSpec or Cucumber. I'm going to go with RSpec. It's pretty much what I like to use. But also Cucumber, if you're really interested into a BDD, is a solid option and is generated out of the box. And now I'm just going to show you guys my IDE. I'm going to minimize this and go back to the presentation one second. Perfect. And now I'm going to switch the screen. Let's see if you guys are going to be able to see it. Here we go. And then we have here our IDE that show us what it was generated. Um, just to go a little bit through our first test, right? Our first test is using a mobile app that was developed by Source Labs. And it's just a demo app where you can select a product and just add the product to the cart, right? I'm gonna just right now run it. Just to let you know, this is gonna, there we go because it's my environment variable. I noticed that afterwards, let me just clear here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do RSpec spec. This is the way that we can run all of our RSpec tests. And it's gonna be running on browser stack and I'm gonna show you how it looks. This is out of the box without any extra configuration. So now if I go to browser stack, and this is the interesting part, and I will show you how it looks locally afterwards. You can see that now it's running. Of course, the video recording is gonna be available afterwards, but it will just pretty much looks like what's happening here. I ran the test before, just with another framework generated. So you guys could actually experience now it finished executing and it's gonna check that the add to car button is there. It's gonna show you, of course, as browser stack does, everything that is going on here, where the element is being clicked, et cetera, et cetera. Let's just rewatch it one more time. So maybe it was a little bit too fast, right? We can see the app being opened in a remote device. And then we can just see that it's looking to see the right text, right? The idea with executing this first test and showing it this way is just for you guys to see that right out of the box, we have everything configured to run our test both locally and in browser stack cross-platform in this case, because I chose to create a cross-platform framework. I'm gonna go back to the presentation now. So hopefully you guys are back here with me. I know it's gonna be a lot of back and forth. So please work bear with me, but now, we're gonna talk about the project structure and the decisions behind that structure, right? Because when I started working with Raider, my idea was to solve some of the issues that I faced multiple times with several customers that I know, okay, I always need to create a driver in a certain way. I like to have my page objects in this certain way. But then when I started the open source project a couple of years ago, I think around three years ago, I wanted to also offer more of a generalized solution for people that wanted to get into Ruby automation, both web and mobile, right? So now we're gonna do a deep dive into the different areas of the project. And I will just go back to my IDE to show you guys. I'm gonna see if it's smoother for you if I just transition the screen again. Ooh, just one second. There we go. Share. Perfect. So now let's walk through what comes out of the box in the framework, right? If we start from the top, we have an allure results folder. Why do we have this folder? This is because there is a dashboard generator called Allure that I particularly really like. 
that generates a dashboard for us with all of our test results. Something that was really important for me when I was creating projects for different customers was setting up an analysis dashboard, setting up really fast. And uh, what can I say? I didn't want to spend a lot of time building a dashboard. I also didn't want to necessarily have a paid solution for a dashboard because certain customers prefer something that they can host themselves or you know they just want to see, they, they might not necessarily want to pay or have that extra cost. So I found myself that Allure is a really good open source alternative. They have a paid version, of course, but you can see here that in our test, we're taking screenshots when the test is executed and we have the result of the test here in JSON, right? I will show you how the dashboard looks afterwards. So if we just do Allure serve Allure results, this is gonna start a small Java server and it's gonna show our report right here. And we can see the screenshot at the point that the test finished, right? I'm gonna go back to my IDE, perfect. And I'm gonna just kill the server so we don't have too many things running in the background. And now we go to the folder of configurations, right? This one is particularly interesting because one of the things I really like to have is, I really like to have my capabilities organized, right? Especially for cross-platform frameworks, I, at the beginning I started experimenting with, with one capability file for Android, one capability file for iOS, right? And another capability file, let's say for browser stack or whatever cloud provider uh, I will be using at the time. I end up having everything in one, I found that it was easier for me to manipulate, to make it more dynamic. As you can see, for example, the browser stack user and the browser stack key are environment variables that I have already set up, right? And this is just an example that comes out of the box. Um, the idea with having all these preset uh, capabilities, I would call basic capabilities, is for especially people that are new to mobile automation, to have a basis and to have a, what they need to run a test like we just run right now. Because I feel it's always more exciting to see something running and then start figuring out, okay, what is the right capability I want? What is you know the configuration I'm looking afterwards? Then there's a separate file that is a configuration file. It's gonna be actually pretty empty. It only has a platform and it has a platform iOS. This is a file I modify dynamically. Uh, the idea here is to show also people that are starting that they don't necessarily need to duplicate everything, right? By changing the platform here, it's gonna change the platform you are executing again. So if you put Android, I'm gonna show you what's happening in the background and how we're fetching this. It's gonna execute the test for Android using the Android capabilities, the same for iOS, et cetera, et cetera. Right now on the current version of Raider, I haven't added a, the platform name to be dynamic on browser stack, but I'm adding more and more support for a browser stack. So there are gonna be a lot of commands coming up on the next release where you can get all the different devices from browser stack through Ruby Raider commands, right? Just to show you what I mean by Ruby Raider commands, Raider also comes with a series of helper commands. So you can see here, if you just execute Raider, you're gonna see that you have Raider generate and it gives you everything regarding scaffolding, a new plugin manager for our plugins. And then you have utility, that's where you will find the, the browser commands eventually. But here you can change a lot of different things, right? And you can also start your Appium server if you want a, with a certain configuration. But moving on into the helpers, which I think are a really interesting area. As I mentioned, when I was developing this uh, framework generator, right, I wanted to have, what can I say, the basis for all my new projects. So the first thing I need is the Allure helper. The Allure helper is what allow us to use the Allure dashboard. Right here, you can see that we have the configuration, we have the 
add enough screenshots and we have the formatter. It's really, really basic because Raider, I built the framework in a, in a little bit of a Ruby on Rails mindset, really opinionated, right? But at the same time, I still want to give a little bit of room for people to make certain decisions, right? Um, this is also something that is in the works, how a modular Raider is gonna become in the future, right? Afterwards, we have the interesting part for everybody here working uh, with APM, that is the APM helper. For cross-platform solutions, right? And this is not for a, when you generate a framework with iOS or with Android, but for cross-platform solutions, I have this method called element, right? Or elements. This is essentially a wrapper on the standard methods that comes with the APM library. In order for you to not have to rewrite every time that you find an element. Let me just give you an example of this. When we go to, let's say, get the backpack, right? The idea for me was that if you want to work cross platforms, you usually have to use different selector strategies. I didn't want it to duplicate the element. I didn't want it to duplicate the class. I wanted to avoid code duplication as much as I could. So through the Appium helper that is being imported at the page level, I just selected, okay, depending on the platform you are, it's gonna be the strategy that you're gonna be used and you need to pass two strategies if you want to have support for both platforms, right? Um, this again, doesn't come of course with the frameworks generated that are targeting only iOS or only Android. The other interesting helper is the driver helper, right? The driver helper contains everything for us that we need to have a driver up and running and expose that driver. So here we can see that this is where we load our configuration, right? This is where we know what platform we are in. So that's why we can modify our configuration. We can also modify it through Raider commands. So we can say, Raider platform Android and iOS, if you want to change it programmatically through the CLI. Um, we here load our capabilities based on our platform. Then we need to do a little bit of parsing of capabilities. Again, all of this for me is to have everything in one single file because it's particularly the way I like to build and create my frameworks. I like to have things in certain boxes and I know where to find the things. So then afterwards we have, and this is gonna become <clears throat> afterwards its own helper, the browser stack helper. We are working on Raider right now to add support for different cloud providers. We started with, with browser stack because luckily they sponsor us, but in the future we're gonna add support for source for Firebase, for AWS, et cetera. So this is gonna become as an option into the CLI menu that you can choose, right? And yeah, this is pretty much straightforward browser stack configuration. And then we have the spec helper that is typical <clears throat> when using an R spec um, framework base. Now, I'm gonna go back to the presentation a bit so if there are any questions, I can just maybe take one second to look at it and I'm just gonna reshare my screen. I talk a lot about the structure of the project right now, everything that comes with the frameworks generated. I want to talk about now the page object model for mobile automation, right? Um, I tried different strategies for my model automation, right? And how to organize my elements, my components, et cetera. I think the classical page object model really works with mobile, at least for me. And that's the format that Raider follows, right? I already touched a little bit upon the pages and I'm gonna touch even more now on this section. So let's jump back to the IDE and let's see if we, Get it here, sure, perfect. And then perfect. 
perfect. Everybody should be able to see my ID. I have the chat open on this uh, window, so please let me know if there's any issues with the screen sharing. But let's look at the pages that we have, right? And the folders that we have under it. We have an abstract folder. This is where I usually have the representation of the idea of a page, right? Um, something that I really like to have uh, is this two string method, right? Two S. This is really nice, especially when I need, for example, on the spec file, um, I would like to, know, I don't know, just get the name prettified of my class. <clears throat> Sorry for that. I really like to have that method there. And if we look at the pages, the pages that come out as an example for the framework are pretty much, what can I say, straightforward. Something I really like to do is, and this is a pattern that we follow in Raider, I really like to mark what each method is doing, right? So I like to mark actions. This is where uh, we can see things that the user can do. So for example, go to the pro detail page of the backpack and then elements and then backpack image, for example. The reason why the elements are kept in private on all the radar frameworks is because we want to work only with actions and values from those elements, right? I know that there are some frameworks that take a different approach where they manipulate elements directly, but I particularly prefer the ability to just offer a selection of actions and a selection of values for the users. In this mobile example, there is not a, a component, right? But this is something we have in other radar examples. In other radar examples, for example, if there's a header that is the same or a footer menu that is the same across the whole app, right? So you navigate using a footer. I will usually call that a component and we treat components in radar a little bit different. So we try to also build our page objects in a modular way. Right now, I do not have an example of that, but in case that you wish to use Raider or you should see an example where under page object says components, right? That what, that's what it means. So with that explained, I'm just gonna now show you a, how an iOS, framework looks like. So let me just go back to my terminal and I'm just gonna share it here. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of back and forth switching guys. So thank you so much for bearing with me. There we go. So now we can clear this and let's say um, Raider new uh, let's call it Appium S iOS. So we're gonna run it. I'm gonna have it here. And now we're gonna select Appium. We're gonna select iOS. And then we're gonna go with our spec. Perfect. We're gonna wait there. Great. And now we're gonna go back to our IDE and I'm just gonna share, and then we can see our IDE here. Perfect. Nice. And the difference we see here is the capabilities, as I mentioned, uh, we only have the capabilities that are relevant for iOS. Then what we're gonna see is that we don't have an Appium a helper because we don't need that wrapper around find element or find element. So it's pretty much really straightforward when you create a framework that is only targeting one particular platform. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put my simulator up here. So I really hope you guys can see it. And I'm gonna run the test. So we're gonna pretty much see the same as you saw in browser stack. My Appium server is running on the terminal, but just to not switch context right now, 
uh, I'm letting you know. But you're going to see now the same test that you saw in browser stack executing on iOS, right? It's pretty much just opening the app and then clicking on the PDP for the backpack and checking if the uh, check card button is available. Let's see. My simulator is taking its sweet time. The server is looking good. Sometimes it's a little bit slow. I don't know if you have experienced these guys, but um, yeah, sometimes doing mobile automation can definitely give you time to grab a coffee or something between test runs. There we go. Nice. It took a while, but we got there. Perfect. So now with that a demo for, let me show us here, perfect. Now with the demo for the iOS framework, we can continue into how our infrastructure will look like, right? A lot of the radar frameworks, and this is an example for the web frameworks that I actually use for a previous conference, come with GitHub Actions set up. This is something we are working on radar, and this is something actually I'm gonna release later today. So the browser stack capabilities can also easily be executed from your GitHub Action pipeline. The idea with this is that, and this is the goal of radar, from the get-go, you already have a project that runs on the CLI that can be executed locally and a, also on your CI-CD pipeline, and that you can execute with a cloud provider like Browser Stack, right? So moving on right now, a little bit about the future of Ruby Raider and the decisions, right? And this is really a, what can I say, where you guys and the rest of the community and, and everybody working at Radar comes in. I want to focus, as I mentioned, more into the support for CICD because usually the infrastructure, right, is one of the main challenges that you might have when using mobile automation. When I started Radar, I was actually working with AWS Device Farm and Jenkins. I was triggering all, I was essentially doing all the configuration and I was triggering all my tests from Jenkins, connecting back to AWS. And it was a little bit cumbersome to say the least, especially because I had a lot of tests, it was really slow. And what can I say? Overall, the infrastructure experience and maintenance was really, really difficult. So especially with the mobile frameworks, the idea and the where we see the future for Radar going is to simplify the setup of infrastructure. As you saw with right now with browser stack, out of the box, you can use browser stack. Just as long as you configure your environment variables and you have an account, you are pretty much ready to go. Uh, the same with GitHub Actions. Another feature that I would like to have, and it's something that I actually already built, but I need to test more, is using Apium for desktop automation. We already have that framework built on Radar. We are just doing the test on Windows to see how it works. But in the future iterations of Radar, you're gonna be able not to only test and use Appium for mobile automation, but also for desktop automation if that's what you need or that's what you pretty much want, right? Before I continue, I will leave a little bit room for questions. Let's see if anybody has a question on the chat. I do not see any questions. Okay, perfect. And afterwards, if we look at the next is where you can get support if you want to start using Radar, right? This is, I think is something important when you are using a new framework, if you want to use Radar, or a, when you try and get yourself into maybe debugging something or something is not working the way that you want. You can, of course, 
find a as in Raider in GitHub. We also have a Slack channel to answer any questions. Uh, we also have our main website. Uh, we are on Gitter and a couple of other social medias, right? Um, but that's where you can find mainly support for the community. You can always create an issue. We try to fix them as fast as we can. And especially now, because we are gonna release in the next couple of months a desktop application. So you can do all the CLI generation that I showed through a GUI. So you can just use using a GUI, you can do the same uh, and see all your tests and everything. So it's easier for you to uh, generate your frameworks, right? Um, I was expecting a couple more questions, so this is really good. Um, I actually finished a little bit earlier. So anyone, any questions that you have on the mic and everything, I, it went a little bit faster than I was expecting. Uh, yeah. uh, thanks, Augustin, for sharing your experience with us today. Thank you so much. See you guys. Have a nice day.